because of external male hormones that are, that are feeding back on the ovary, maybe because of as women gain weight, they generate a lot of insulin, and that insulin feeds back in the ovary and leads to too much testosterone production. And sometimes the ovary itself is dysfunctional and producing too much testosterone or male hormones. And we mentioned that estrogen is the working hormone for women. Well, women make a lot of testosterone. They just convert it to estrogen. And basically, if there's too much testosterone, the system stops working. So you'll start skipping periods or missing periods altogether. IUDs. IUD is an intrauterine device which you place in the uterus that can also be used for contraception in, in young and reproductively aged women. Those work at the level of the uterus by basically making the environment within the uterus not receptive for an early embryo to grow. So if we kind of just move on just a little bit to the next slide, which I believe were, let's talk, you know what, let's talk about um, slides 11 and 12 right now. So on slide 11, ages 18 to 45, reproductively aged women, you're supposed to have regular menstrual cycles. If you're not having regular menstrual cycles, then you should really talk to your doctor. Regular being every 22 to 36 days, whatever your regular is. Everybody thinks they have to have 28 day cycles. That's really just the average. Some women are regular at 22 days, some regular women are regular at 34 days. But you should be regular within a day or two. Another thing that's really starting to become a problem as we all are drinking maybe less milk, ingesting less calcium, our diets are changing, but bone health is really important now that women are living to be 90. And most bone is laid down sometime between the ages of 12 and, and 25 to 30. So as a reproductively aged woman, woman, you really have to also still make sure you're getting enough calcium. And the calcium recommendations I, I, that I use is if you're a reproductively aged woman, you should be getting at least 1,000. And I would venture to guess that most people in the room, this room are not getting 1,000. Because if you want to be an, an elderly woman who stands up straight and proud and happy, you need to make sure your bones are strong and set up. Yes, ma'am. Um, if, if you've talked to your doctor about it, I'm sure you're on the right dose, but some women take up to 3,000 milligrams. The hard part is, is that calcium is very difficult to absorb. So you need to make sure you're taking it either with food or there are certain preparations that you don't have to take with food. It depends on the type that it is. So you're gonna, you should probably you should talk to your, your internist or your, your gynecologist and figure out what type you're taking. Or you could probably even go on the internet and read what, the, what they recommend when to take it. Because there's some that you don't have to take with food and there's some that you do. Yeah, just just certainly check check on that. You're welcome. As far as diet sets the tone for health, heart disease is the number one killer of women. Heart disease is the number one killer of men. We need to all take better care of ourselves when we're 18 to 45 so we don't get a heart attack when we're 50, 60, and 70. Everything, your body is just an ongoing organism, so you need to start taking care of it at a young age. <clears throat> Cyclical hormone changes with the monthly cycle are normal. What, what can be problems for reproductive age women? Accidental pregnancy. Accidental pregnancy can really dramatically change a young woman's life, their life choices, and their options. And I think that, that it's very important to talk about not only good sexual health, abstinence, but if you're going to choose to be sexually active, then you need to protect yourself against an accidental pregnancy. Because accidental pregnancies can lead to loss of a fallopian tube, which is actually where an early conception occurs, or sometimes in, in other situations it can lead to dramatic damage to the uterus and you could never be pregnant again. The other part of the story is if you're not ready to have a family, you're, you're really not ready to be pregnant. 
Missing periods, polycystic ovarian syndrome is something to be aware of. If you're not getting your period at all, that's called amenorrhea. And amenorrhea basically means that you're not making any estrogen. If you're not making any estrogen as a 18 to 45 year old woman, your bones are actually starting to decline early. And that's something that needs to be addressed by your doctor. Pelvic pain. It's normal to have cramping with your period, but it's not normal to have to be at home for three days with a heating pad and not able to go to work. There are syndromes of pelvic pain, and teenage girls with pelvic pain do need to be evaluated for syndromes called endometriosis, and women in their 20s to 30s to 40s often can have something called fibroids. Fibroids are benign tumors of the uterus, but they can get large, sometimes as large as a cantaloupe. And they cause a lot of pain and discomfort. And that's what your gynecologist is sometimes actually feeling for when they're doing their exam. If we go to the next page, yes ma'am. No. If we go to the next page, women must protect their fertility. So primarily what I talk about every day is, is fertility. So 90% of all the patients I see are arriving with problems with getting pregnant. You need to protect your fertility. So if you're not cycling regularly, you need to see your OBGYN. We all know smoking is bad and causes cancer, but did you all know that smoking causes early menopause? Smoking damages your egg pool. Smoking is associated with more infertility, more miscarriages, more pregnancy loss. So none of us should really be smoking, we know that. But as far as a message to drive home to your friends who are young women who are smoking, sometimes, yeah, I don't, I'm never gonna get cancer, but if you tell them that they're gonna go through menopause early, that might be the motivation they, they, they need. But I would encourage everyone to help their friends and family to quit smoking. Protection against infection. So really, unless you're in a monogamous relationship, you shouldn't have unprotected intercourse because fallopian tubes can get damaged, and once they're damaged, they very rarely can be repaired. As far as problems, we've already kind of broken that out, but let's talk about cervical cancer, which is what the purpose of your annual exam is. So that's the pap smear, and breast cancer. So in the 30s, some women do develop breast cancer. So you do, there are some differing opinions on this, but you should at least go to the doctor and have a breast exam. And there are people who talk about doing self breast exam once a month. So if we go on to the next slide, and I guess I'm talking, talking too much here, so we're gonna kind of cruise through this next slide here, but I, I had to put up how everything works. So, what you can see is the ovary ovulates an egg. Sperm meet the egg at the end of the fallopian tube. That embryo divides into the, in, in the fallopian tube and implantation occurs in the uterus. That's how we all got here. And the, this next slide with these pictures, every single one of us in this room looks like this. Every single one of us in this room hatched from a shell, believe it or not because human eggs have shells. And if you look at the first image on the left, you'll see the egg. Remember how I mentioned the egg is special, important, needs to be protected, unique. And right below that, you'll see that little speck, that's the sperm. Sperm is a DNA packet that's necessary for the egg to run. But really, the egg is a very magical, special type of cell that allows women to not achieve a pregnancy and help maintain the species. So this next slide, this next picture called the zygote is a fertilized egg. It's still one cell, but if you look, it has two inner circles in it. That's the male and female nuclei. And that one cell goes to eight cells, which is the, the bottom picture, day three embryo, goes to 250 cells, which is the blastocyst. And then you'll see the next one up, hatching blastocyst. So that blastocyst breaks out of its shell. And if it's in a uterus that's properly prepared, it will implant and grow and try to make a pregnancy. So that's how we all kind of got here. We all succeeded in this process. If we go 